welcome to today's video guys thank you guys for clicking on this video listen up as you could just see i just barely squatted 315 today's video is going to be a squat progression video and i figured i might as well talk about how to warm up during the squat because i feel like this topic isn't talked about enough on youtube and squatting itself is a technical movement and you know it just needs to be expressed about what it takes to build up to a heavy max or just just how to navigate when you're squatting so in this video i work up to a 315 you know, uh, what you saw in the beginning was a 315 attempt, and what you also saw was my le the left side of my body not reacting to the left itself. So, in this video, I take it upon myself to try again on the 315, this time after a week's worth of rest in uh, mobility work, and we're just going to see what happens when I put 315 on my back in the middle of this video. This this video is mainly comprised of squatting. It's only a squat progression video. And how it's constructed is I pyramid up to 315, then I do a drop set. Not, not really a drop set, I do some back offsets, just some more volume work, and then I do some front raises just because I have the time to kill in the gym. This squat portion of my workout was probably about, probably about 40 minutes in length because I just wanted to make sure that my squatting wasn't completely damaged when I injured myself on my left side. So right now I think we have about a plate on the bar. I think we're hitting up a plate and some change maybe, I don't know. But let's talk about what I did before I put a plate on. One of the first clips was me just stretching, me just getting my legs warm without anything on my back. I do this primarily because it sends, it sends blood to where I need it to be. You know? So for example, going under the bar cold, going to, under the bar with a plate on your back. Yes, you could warm up with just a plate on your back, but that would not be an ideal move only because your body, your nervous system would not recognize what's going on immediately. You know, Of course, after a few reps of doing 135 on your back, your body will catch up and be like, okay, you know what, today we're squatting. You know, but you didn't give it any time to warm any notice, you know, so that's what the kicking of the legs, the stretching of the hip flexor, the, just the movement of the lower body itself does, even doing some air squats, just, you know, gets the mind right about what you're trying to do today. Following that up, I put the bar on my back and I did some, I did some bar squats, you know, just some simple bar and movement squats. Again, just getting my mind right, trying to make sure that I'm hitting depth before I actually put any type of weight on my back. This is very important, very crucial in warming up because we are taking baby steps. We are not just jumping in to the weight that would prolong injury or my injured side and it wouldn't be smart you know so we're trying to lift smarter not faster yes yes you can blow <laughs> yes you can complete this workout in about 45 minutes, I've done a video on it, you know? Uh, but of course, the squats was a part of that program or part of that training segment. But yes, 
what I'm just basically trying to say is, yes, you could squat a lot faster than how I am right now. But is that, and will that be the most effective? Most likely not. So we're gonna take our time. We are not going to rush anything. Going to the gym, working out, being an athlete is all about how long you can be that athlete. How long you can be healthy in your sport. Because the moment that you are injured, the moment that you cannot do whatever you want to do, you are done. Imagine imagine a guitarist, for example, right? Yes, you can learn how to play guitar in a couple of months and you'd be decent, probably a little bit under decent, right? But the, the greats, I don't know any name, probably Jimi Hendrix or something, I don't know. But people who are amazing at their talent, they took the time, they took precision when it came to their craft, you know? And they didn't force it upon themselves. Same thing has to come, same thing, the same mentality, the same type of commitment has to be presented when you are in the gym learning something new or trying to execute something that you haven't done in a while or uh, coming back from an injury. You have to take your time. You have to be willing and able to be patient when it comes to lifting so moving forward probably have about a plate and a quarter plate two plates on and how i like to warm up is i like to go plate quarter plate quarter or in layman's terms 45 pounds then 25 pounds 45 pounds and 25 pounds just to make it easier on my nervous system i don't want to shock anything shock any part of my body because shocking it would lead to a bad warm-up progression and that's something that we do not want we don't want to jump from one plate to two plates to three plates to four plates although people do that yes it's not ideal for a beginner not ideal for for an, an, an intermediate lifter, you know, a person who only squats for 405 pounds, 405 pounds, which is only four plates, should not be going from one to two to three to four. They should not just have four warm up sets and then call it a day. No, you should, you should ideally be taking small, taking necessary jumps in order to get up to your working weight, which would be 405, or maybe even a little bit under 405. You know? So take your time when it comes to squat progression, take your time when it comes to warming up. You know, you are getting your body used to the movement. Yes, although you've been probably squatting for months, years, etc., you haven't been squatting all day that day, no, and you probably weren't squatting yesterday, so your body has to get readjusted to what's the move what what's the movement pattern for today and the only way to do that is to ease it in to ease it in i couldn't make other references maybe you know um you know a little bit naughty naughtier ones to maybe expand my point of view but i'm pretty sure you guys get it now all right so we worked up in this workout we worked up to a 315 now soon i don't know when but soon this my 315 attempt will be shown and if it hasn't already i'm sorry but i'm gonna spoil it it was a good one it i completed the rep as executed you know majority of these angles are primarily focusing on my left side 
my lower left side just to make sure that nothing my rehabilitation sessions or what's going on with my left side isn't progressively getting worse it's progressively getting better that's why you see majority of my left side you know and although majority of these videos are for me i share it with you guys because i know that there are people out there who are in fact injured and are most likely in my same predicament and just need you know uh someone who's relatable in their life to to guide them or to you know just to have a different perception of where they're coming from you know or for them just to really understand that they're not alone in the world you know everyone has problems everyone has injuries everyone can overcome these issues so after working up to 315 i did some back off sets i believe it was uh, 275 i think i did four sets of five and or five sets of four and everything was moving exceptionally well and today was a very very good squat day you know so because it was very very good squat day and everything was moving very very well i decided to do some front squats and i used to do front squats a lot probably a year ago my max on front squats is about 275 and since then i haven't really touched front squats i don't know why but i don't touch front squats that much anymore and I'm gonna change that for my program because I noticed that when I have a lot of weight while I'm back squatting and I have a lot of weight on my back I have a sticking point and hopefully front squats can allow me to trans transcend that stickiness that sticky point and hopefully increase my back squat to where I want it to be which is 405 but since the injury my max is probably around 335 340 on a good day and i'm not complaining about that because it gives me a chance to really assess my form it gives me an opportunity to teach you guys whoever is out there that needs to be taught or is willing to learn a little bit more and it gives me content to where you guys can see that yes i was injured but i'm back to this and i'm back i'm stronger and i'm not complaining about anything because this is my own self doing so yeah moved on to front squats i think i did 185 for about 10 reps each and i think i did about three sets and then after all the squatting was said and done, I continued on with my regular leg routine that hasn't changed in about a year. But I love this leg routine. It has put some serious thickness on my quads, just on my legs overall. And the only thing that I can say that I've incorporated throughout this year and a half was probably more calf raises you know and the main reason why I did that was because honestly my girlfriend pointed out to me that my calves are actually very small and it was it wasn't a good look for a person who was stocky and very thick and to have small calves so I made it a point to add more have raises into my programming uh, and which isn't a bad thing because think about it right now I just did a lot of sets of squats and usually I only do about four sets of calves so I've increased that to about nine sets of calves yes it sounds like a lot but I usually split those sets into three exercises or I just do two and I do five sets and five sets, whatever I'm feeling like for today. But the point is, uh, the only thing that's changed within this year has been my calf raises or the amount of calf raises that I do in a particular week. And 
I'm still enjoying everything that I do, all my leg exercises, and it isn't a problem. There's no issue. I'm still progressive overloading, which is amazing. So, thank you guys for watching this leg progression video, and hopefully you learned how to warm up or how I like to warm up in particularly, or what I feel like should be the appropriate way to warm up when you are squatting. There are other forms of warming up when it comes to benching and deadlifting, but maybe in the future I'll get to those videos as well as I am still trying to figure out where I am, where my strength is after this injury. So. Thank you guys for watching this video. I appreciate you for watching this video. I have big, big million dollar ideas coming up. So please stay tuned. Please like, subscribe, tell your homie about this because we're homies now. And as a homie to a homie, you should tell your other homie. So, hey, that deep voice, you like this deep voice? Maybe you like this deep voice, maybe I can record a voiceover like this one day and maybe that'll make you want to subscribe a little bit more. All right now, catch you right here.